Hey, hey, part two, single premium private mortgage insurance on conventional loans. We're going to break it all down. Come on back. Hey there, welcome to part two of the PMI series that we're working on here, trying to break down all the options of private mortgage insurance on conventional loans so we can make the best choices possible. I am Brandon Lewis with Integrity Home Mortgage, run this little mortgage is health here channel, little tongue twister there, but we love providing great information to help our clients out and anybody. You're going through the process trying to take some pain out of this process. So again, this is part two. We're gonna talk about single premium PMI. So what is that? Just like it sounds, instead of having PMI built into your monthly payment and paying it until you build up 20% equity, getting the appraisal, requesting for it to be removed, all that fun stuff. This option here is a single premium. You're just paying it as a one lump sum at the time of close. So it's what we call Band-Aid. Rip it off, get it over and done with quickly. A couple great things about single premium PMI is you know exactly what your PMI exposure is going to be. It's a flat dollar amount, it's capped at closing. The monthly folks, they may not know how long exactly they're gonna be paying it. You know, so there's some uncertainty with the monthly PMI where here on the single premium, it's 100% certain and you know what your exposure to that private mortgage insurance is going to be. All right, refresh it real quick on what is PMI or private mortgage insurance. This is an insurance that's required on conventional mortgages when a buyer's putting less than 20% down. It protects the investor on the loan if you go into default or foreclosure. This would protect them and help them recoup some of their losses. So it does not protect the homeowner. You get the benefit of paying it, but the sole purpose is to protect the investor on the loan. So again, we wanna get rid of this or pay as little towards it as possible. All right, so I'm gonna bring up the loan scenario real quick. Let's take a look at the first option of two that we're gonna to review today. I say that because there's you have two choices when using single premium private mortgage insurance. The differences are, one, you can pay it all in cash with your down payment and other closing costs at closing, or if you have the room in your loan, you may be able to finance that single premium PMI amount into the loan amount, which is pretty cool too. So looking over the scenario here, same thing as last time, all the same factors as we reviewed in part one. So this is the same client, buying a $300,000 home, putting 10% down, and leaving them with a loan amount of $270,000. Now, in part one, we reviewed the monthly PMI, and that's when the PMI was added into the payment. So here we'll see it's a big goose egg this time. So single premium PMI is when you say, hey, I don't wanna pay it in the monthly payment. I'd rather pay it as a one lump sum and get it over. So let's check out how exactly this impacts the numbers here. Continuing to scroll on down the loan scenario here, you'll notice that your monthly payment is gonna be $1,524.92. Compared to the monthly PMI, the monthly PMI was $1,587.92 a month. Just to break down the math, real quick, that's $63 less per month on your mortgage payment by going with the single premium. Now, let's continue to go down, compare apples to apples here so we can help figure out what's the best option here. What's going to be better for me, monthly or single premium PMI or that Ferrari in part number three. All right, so going on down, we really doesn't hit us again until we get to the cash to close. So you're bringing your down payment to closing. You're bringing your closing cost to closing. You weren't able to get a credit for that. And on the scenario with the single premium mortgage insurance being paid outside of closing or with your down payment, you're going to bring $41,419.92. But remember, you have that benefit of a payment that's $63 lower per month. Now, when we compare the cash due at closing on the monthly PMI scenario, that loan requires you to bring in $39,000. 
$9,124.92. So again, it's a little trade-off there. Do I want a little better monthly payment or possibly bring a little bit more to closing there? Now, how do we figure out what's best there? What's gonna work to be in your best interest? What we wanna do real quick is take that amount of the single premium PMI, which we've circled right there, and you'll notice for this particular client, based on their credit score, their down payment, their debt to income ratio, the PMI amount in a one-time payment would be $2,295. Now, what we wanna do is take a quick look at the difference between the monthly mortgage the PMI payment and the single premium mortgage insurance payment and see what that savings is and divide that into the monthly premium. So if we take the $63 a month savings, divide that into the $2,295, that is just at 36. And what that means is that's gonna be 36 months of making that monthly PMI payment would be exactly the same as going forward with the single premium PMI. So if you know you're gonna be in the home for long term, say, you know, five, 10 years, and you have the ability to pay that single premium PMI, it'd be an easier option to go with. Capture exposure at that single amount. If we were to break down how long you may have the monthly, you'll find that that single premium will save you more over the life of the loan as well. That's when that one comes in handy, is when you want the lowest possible payment and you wanna cap your PMI exposure and just get it over and done. So this scenario again portrays when you're gonna bring that cash, that single premium PMI payment to closing. Now, there is another option when you're going with single premium PMI, and that option is to finance that single premium amount into the loan. Now, you do have to have room in the loan to do this. So if you're putting down the program minimum down payment, let's say you're putting 3% down on a conventional loan, then you're not gonna have room to finance PMI into your loan. But if you're putting 10% down, 15% down, this may not be a bad option at all. So definitely one we always wanna look at. All right, so let's do the same comparison here to the monthly PMI. Okay, what we're gonna see here are some big differences, there's gonna be some trade-offs there. So when looking at the loan scenario, and this one that I put up is the financed single premium. So this means we're gonna take that $2,295 and we're gonna add it into the loan amount. Instead of you bringing the cash for it, it's gonna be rolled into the loan. So going down the loan scenario, interest rate, all that good stuff's going to stay the same. You'll notice there's gonna be a little bit of an increase to that principal and interest, and that's because you're financing that mortgage insurance premium. Your loan balance is no longer 270 or 270,000 as it was in the previous scenarios. Now your loan amount's going to be 272,000 $295. Now, jumping down, you'll see the monthly mortgage insurance is zero. Again, this is single premium, so it's not even factored into the monthly payment, at least not as a premium. And then we get down to the total monthly payment. So what is your total payment on the scenario where you finance your single premium PMI? That's going to be a monthly payment of $1,535.23. Now, remember on our monthly PMI, the monthly payment was $1,524.92. So in this case, by removing the PMI from the monthly payment and paying it as a one-time premium and rolling it into the loan amount, you're now gonna save right at $52.61 a month. So a little less savings compared to when you bring the single premium amount to closing but a saving still nonetheless. Now, you'll also notice, as I mentioned a minute ago, your principal and interest portion increased on the payment. So that is going to be an added cost to the PMI 
that we do want to factor into this scenario. So again, on the scenario that we have here in front of us with the finance, private mortgage insurance, single premium, principal and interest is $1,222.73. In the scenario where the PMI is not financed into the loan, the principal and interest portion of the payment is $1,212.42. When you finance the single PMI premium into the loan amount, it increased the monthly payment by $10.31. Now that $10.31 will be there over the life of the loan. Hopefully you'll refinance at some point and it's not a factor, but do keep that in mind. When you finance the single premium PMI, it's kind of meeting in the middle of the two scenarios we've already compared. It'll give you a nice low payment as if you don't have monthly private mortgage insurance, but you may bring a little more to closing or you meet in the middle and you finance that single premium PMI and you see that small increase to the monthly payment. Make sure you're working with a lender that's reviewing all these options for you. It is extremely important as to what may be in your best interest financially. All right, so again, just to recap here, what we just reviewed was single premium private mortgage insurance on conventional loans. So instead of having the PMI built into the monthly payment like we're normally accustomed to. Now we're saying, no, nope, take it out of my payment. I want to pay it as a one-time premium at closing. And then don't forget, you can pay it at closing just like you do your down payment and closing costs. Or if you have room in the loan, you can finance it into the loan amount. Again, that's a pretty cool factor about this loan as well. Benefits of this PMI option is you know your PMI exposure is capped at exactly $2,295 in this scenario, and you will not pay a penny more towards the PMI. If you finance it, you know that principal and interest payment is going to bump up a small amount there as well. All right, so that is the end of part two, and that covers your single premium PMI options financed and paid at closing compared to what we covered in part one, which was the monthly PMI. Now come on back for part three. This is going to be the what I consider the Ferrari of the mortgage business, and this is lender paid PMI. Now make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as well. That'll give you the notification when we release part three coming out here in just a couple days. Put any questions you have down in the comments. We'd love to hear any comments about single premium PMI versus the monthly PMI. Again, we hear all types of crazy horror stories out there. And as always, we greatly appreciate your support and checking out our channel. This is Brandon Lewis with Integrity Home Mortgage. I'll catch you on the next mortgage tip.